am going to be talking today about a project that we're working on, which is um, looking at how we can use satellite data for actually create measures of sort of local understanding of urban context. Broadly speaking, my understanding of urban context um, is a sort of three general approaches. The first is a kind of uh, morpho uh, morphometric approach, so I've just I've referred to this as space syntax here, where we're looking at the built characteristics of network geometries uh, and positions of buildings relative to those. Um, a tabular approach, which is more my research area, and uh, more broadly understood as geodemographics, although that tends to incorporate both built environment characteristics and population characteristics. Uh, and then uh, land use sort of land cover classifications, which tend to be, uh, although not exclusively, on a sort of pixel basis and derived from satellite data. Um, this is a slightly different approach to any of those, um, and the, the way in which we um, configure this is we're using Sentinel-2 data, um, and this has got a 10 meter resolution, um, and we're looking at the uh, red, green, blue bands, and also the near infrared band. And the idea of what we, um, the idea of the, um, the input data to our, our, our method is that for around every postcode in the country, we're taking a small area, uh, and it's a 16 by 16 grid around each postcode. And then from that, we're extracting Sentinel-2 data for those locations, and that's our input data set. Um, there's challenges in that, in that the, um, uh, the ESA data is configured with metadata, which gives you things like cloud cover, uh, and that wasn't actually, that's on a basic, a per tile basis, so we actually had to look at that on a local level. Uh, and then we also did some reprocessing of the images as well to sort of improve some of the clarity of those. We had a target date of around 30th of September 2020, to extract a set of images for, but actually we needed a roving date from that to ensure that all the postcodes in the country had a sort of cloud-free image, which we've done. So this essentially creates a sort of normalized data set um, uh, for the input into the uh, classification process. Um, we apply convolutional neural network to the, 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 to the data. Um, convolutional neural networks essentially um, encode characteristics from the data and then aim to rebuild those um, in, a, in, a, in a decoding phase, which is the latter half. Um, in this project, we were only interested in the encoding phase, so taking the original data uh, and essentially reducing its dimensions down. Uh, and and we end, what we end up with is all of those bands of data reduced into um, 64 separate values. So for each of the postcodes, we have 64 values which are extracted using the convolutional neural net um, and from, the, from the data. Um, we actually looked at the uh, decoding phase only in terms of validation accuracy to look at as a sort of an assumption that the encoding might be effective, but actually we discarded that. So you can think about this a little bit like if you were building a tabular classification where you might use something like principal component analysis to synthesize um, uh, uh, a series of, uh, a larger series of data um, uh, variables rather down into a, a sort of smaller subset. Um, using um, uh, something called a clustergram, we looked at what would be an effective partitioning of these 64 variables for all of the postcodes. Um, seven clusters was identified, um, and the preliminary results are here on, on the map. This is just an area of South Liverpool. The data underneath it are actually from Google Maps, not from um, uh, Sentinel-2. Uh, on the left is the original data, and you see there's lots of um, differentiation uh, of the different areas. Now, that's actually problematic. It's basically showing that the, um, the autoencoder process is incredibly sensitive to those local contexts, and they're not actually helpful differentiation. So what we did was we applied a secondary step after we got the uh, outputs from the autoencoder uh, to look within each of, the, um, each of these square geometries which we extracted data for and essentially create a spatially smoothed average for that. So we run the same clustergram process. It also shows seven clusters, and the reclustered version of that original is on the right, and it actually is a much more improved um, uh, model. The, the, the clusters that come out of it are a, a lot more compact. Um, and this is just really the sort of final slide I've got. One on the left just to show that there is some interest in differentiation. This is Liverpool city region. Picks up urban rural differences, picks up different types of density of, um, uh, of uh, suburban areas. Uh, and on the right um, is, some, uh, is really a part of the error checking that we've done in the paper accompanying this. One of the things we're interested in is not overclaiming on these data. You know, they show what they show and they learn the information they learn from the data you presented to them. On the right are two areas. On the left-hand side, um, the pixelated values are the Sentinel-2 images, and on the right are some aerial photographs for the same location. In our model, these come up as the same clusters. 
Um, but actually, if you look at the, um, something like the index of multiple deprivation for these, these are very, very different locations. The one at the top is a sort of very affluent sort of suburban location, large houses, large gardens. The one at the bottom uh, is, a, um, is a sort of council estate, uh, but also happens to have a lot of parkland around. In the centre and images, essentially, they look quite, uh, quite similar, but in fact, they have very different sort of social characteristics. And I think that's always something to bear in mind when you're actually doing these analyses. There's very interesting interactions with what is learned from the data and the data scale at which uh, you're supplying the algorithms. But I think it's important not to overclaim on what they actually show when you produce a model at the other end.